you're an allegedly established professional with allegedly your shit together, like a lawyer. Dina, you're so effing stressed all the time. Once you actually become lawyers, it's not a guarantee that you will be happy. How do we stay happy and healthy in law practice? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tina. I'm a corporate lawyer in the Philippines. First things first, you guys, if this arm looks darker than this one, it's because I have a window right here. This is my light source and this arm is getting left behind. So that's that. So for you guys who are Filipino lawyers, you probably know of this certain Facebook group exclusively for Filipino lawyers. In that group lately, I've been seeing posts from fellow lawyers about how some of them are discontented or unhappy with their lives or their careers. Some of them would ask for career advice or life coaching advice from the other lawyer members of that group. And it got me thinking, Everyone talks about the victory and the triumph of becoming a lawyer, right? Because it's an uphill climb. But once you're actually there, once you actually become lawyers, it's not a guarantee that you will be happy. It's actually a guarantee that you will always be stressed. <laughs> Eventually, the feeling of euphoria of being able to call yourself a lawyer will fade. And then what? How do you stay happy? How do you stay happy in a profession which by its nature, I mean you absorb people's problems and you solve them, is not a happy one to begin with. Lawyers, like everyone else, only show their highlight reels or their best moments on social media. Only very few are brave enough to share their stories of depression or unhappiness or dissatisfaction with their lives. So I'm sure you don't hear that many stories about lawyers who are depressed or are experiencing an existential crisis. But believe me, there are lawyers who do. Personally, I'm lucky that I've never been depressed in law practice, thank God. It's stressful enough as it is, but I've been in law practice for seven years now. So like most, if not all other lawyers, I've had my fair share of ups and downs since I began. I've had plenty of moments wherein I'm like, Dina, you're so effing stressed all the time. All you do is work. Is this all there is to life? I don't want to work like a dog until I die. Mga <laughs> ganyan. Relatedly, I also have some good friends who told me that they don't want to be lawyers anymore. They just want to become housewives instead. <laughs> Half seriously naman, pero my seriousness pa rin. But I think that everyone has those moments. It's normal. What's important is that you don't wallow in those thoughts and in those emotions. And instead, you move forward and you learn how to find your happiness again. So how do we do that? How do we stay happy and healthy in law practice? Here are my five tips. My first tip is to know your priorities in life. Our priorities are the areas in our lives which are meaningful or important to us. Setting a hierarchy of priorities is important because instead of feeling like everything is important, priorities help you choose what you need to focus on first. Think to yourself, what things in life are most important to me? In the hierarchy of aspects of a person's life, which of those aspects are at the top of the hierarchy and which are at the bottom? Is it work, family, health, home, relationships, friendship, hobbies, recreation or fun, self-care, personal growth, sports, spirituality, religion or money? Another question, what if you're not sure what your priorities are? To help you identify your priorities, you need to picture your vision for your life. Visualize what you want your future to look like. Doing that will help you to figure out what you need to prioritize to reach those goals. You can also ask yourself what success means to you. Is success to you having authored 20 books? Or is it being able to take your family around the world traveling? Or is it simply having found inner peace? Now, when you've figured out your top priorities, it makes you realize that you don't have to do everything. I tell you, it's impossible to do everything at performance level 100% all the time. It's, it's not doable. Something has to yield. So when you know your priorities, you can set aside those aspects which are not your priorities. You can tell others or even yourself, I can't do this, it's not my priority right now. Once you set your priorities, you know which activities or practices or relationships you actually want to put your genuine time and effort into. Everything which is a lesser priority is simply not as important. So for example, sa akin lang, my life priority and my endless struggle <laughs> is balance. I want to be able to do a little bit of everything in life all at once. So instead of going 90% career and then 10% everything else, I prefer going 20% family, 20% home, 20% career, 20% health and fitness, and 20% self-growth. Ayoko na, I'm a brilliant legal luminary, like wow, dami ko nasulat na libro. But I'm unhealthy and fat and unhappy naman. It's not worth it. On the flip side naman, ayoko that 
I'm super super fit and healthy with six pack abs na kitang kita kahit naka t-shirt ako. <laughs> but career wise, I'm not doing so well naman. So to me lang naman, success really means being well rounded. It's being maybe not a super legal luminary but still doing well career wise. But also having a great family life, being able to share my blessings with my family, being fit and healthy, and feeling purpose in my profession and using it for good. So considering that my priority is balance, whenever I notice that any one aspect in my life, and let's be honest, it's usually work, is taking over my life and engulfing all other aspects, then that's when I take a step back and say, Hoy Tina, remember your priorities. Is it worth it that 99 nga yung grade mo sa work, pero may bilbil ka naman and you're miserable? It's not! So then, I'm gonna try my very best to stop working and to leave my work for the next day. And then go do something other than work. Also, it's not enough to just identify your priorities and then to end there once you know them. You have to act according to your priorities. For example, I know for a fact that most lawyers really have a hard time turning off their work modes. For most of us, it's just really hard to tear ourselves away from our laptops. And I personally know so many lawyers who have suffered from burnout or existential crisis or bad physical health or poor mental wellness because of overworking. I've seen firsthand what being a workaholic does to people and to the people around them as well, so I don't want that for myself. Personally, I still have not perfected my priority of balance, far from it in fact, but I'm still trying. I'm continuing to work on it. So whenever I notice that work is starting to creep up and encroach on my other priorities, I always remember what one of my law firm batchmates said. Take note, honor student to as Atenea Law, as in top 5% of her batch, she said, and I'll never forget it. She said, work should not be the priority in life. Agree. Anyone at work is replaceable, kahit yung chief legal counsel yan. But you are not replaceable to the ones who love you. You can love your work, you can want to marry your work, but at the end of the day, your work really isn't gonna love you back. Now, I'm not telling you to tell your boss, Attorney, I can't draft that legal memo right now. Work is not my priority kasi right now. <laughs> no! <laughs> well, unless being jobless is your priority. It will happen talaga that you will not be able to perfectly balance your priorities all the time. Like, you work too much so you're not able to exercise for months. That's happened to me, definitely. So, in times like that, remember, bawian na lang. Focus on what you really need to do right now, but don't forget to catch up on the priorities that you missed out on when you were super busy doing that first thing. So for me, that's really what I try to do after an imbalance of priorities. Bawi talaga. So let's go back. When you know your priorities, you have to act according to those priorities. When you act according to your priorities, provided of course that it isn't work that's your main priority, then it will really help you switch that work mode off because you know that there are other things in life that are important to you as well. So when you're faced with a difficult decision, remember your priorities and remember what success means to you. Remember your vision for your life. And then keeping those things in mind and using them as your guiding principles. Live your life. My next tip is to not just wait for time, but to actively make it. I am telling you guys, if you yourselves don't be the one to actively press the pause button, then work will really consume you. <laughs> there will always be a reason to keep working. You need to finish this today para hindi ka matambakan tomorrow, or because you're in the zone already and if you stop now, you might lose your mojo. There are just a hundred reasons. Which is why you have to take it upon yourself to be the one to step on the brake and to say, up, 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 this is enough work for the day, it's time to do other things naman. Call my mom, watch a movie, exercise, whatever. If you don't do that, then you will just keep working and working and working. And I guarantee you, you will either burn out really, really quickly, or you will wake up one day and realize that you did nothing with your life aside from study and work. And I don't know about you, but for me, that's a really, really sad way to be. I don't want to be 90 years old and have nothing to show for my life aside from work. So making time should really be a conscious effort. You cannot just sit around waiting for time to be dropped into your lap because if you do that, tatanda ka kakaantay girl! Time won't just be handed to you. You have to create it. Your mentality should not be, ah, I'll do it when I have time. Your mentality should be, I'll make time to do it. The thing about us lawyers is that generally, I think we always anticipate the worst. For example, you think, Ah, oh, if I don't do this right now, my boss is gonna hate me. Or if I don't submit this today, they'll think I'm lazy and I'm never gonna be promoted. And it's that fear of the worst case scenario happening and that worry that keeps us working and working and working and running and running and running on the hamster wheel. We're afraid that if we stop working, it will somehow mean that we failed. But the best thing that helps me defeat that disordered way of thinking is this question. Will this matter five years from now? If it won't, then I'm not gonna give it a tremendous amount of time which it doesn't deserve. If it does naman, then I'm going to keep at it until I'm done. 
even if it's taking a little bit too much of my time right now. I think to myself, if I don't pass this non-disclosure agreement to my boss today, will the corporation crumble? No, the corporation will not crumble, so I can submit it tomorrow. Use your time and your mental energy right now for things that will matter in the future. If they're not as important, then you don't have to do them right now, the very minute that they're asked for. Instead, you can set them aside for you to do at a later time. So time, it's really so valuable. Other people were not even given the opportunity to create time because their time on this earth was cut short. So make time to do things other than work and cherish that time. My next tip is to know your limits. We all have different personal thresholds for the things that we're willing to endure. A person can only push us so far until we feel like our line has been crossed. Now you have to know your line, meaning your limit, and you have to know how to put your foot down once that line has been crossed. Let me give you some concrete examples. I personally know a lawyer whose boss asked him to deliver millions of pesos worth of bribe money to the Bureau of Customs. I'm not kidding. This lawyer knew his limit. And he knew that there's no way in good conscience that he could have done that. So he bravely refused his boss. He told his immediate boss, Ma'am, I'm not comfortable doing that. I think that there's a way that we can do this fair and square. Here's how we can do it, blah blah blah. Even after that though, his immediate boss insisted that he deliver the bribe money. So what he did is that he emailed the very head of the place where he worked. So yung parang boss ng boss niya. And he said, he said, Sir, I'm being instructed to do this but I don't want to, etc, etc. And the boss of his boss agreed and said that he didn't have to do it. You're probably thinking, hindi ba nagalit sa kanya yung immediate boss niya? No, she actually didn't. And they're perfectly fine now. It's as if it never happened. So it really pays to draw your professional line and to stand by that line. Another example is when I was working in the law firm. There were times when we really had to stay in the office on standby overnight. As in, walang uuwi hanggang hindi pa natatapos yung draft. So dun kami sa office nag-dinner, nag-toothbrush, natutulog, nag-breakfast. There was a time that we were doing that a lot, both the associates and the partners. And that's when I realized that my personal limit had been reached. I was like, I don't want to have this kind of life. That I'm always haggard, always have to leave the office late, no time to exercise, no time for hobbies, always afraid of getting scolded or judged if I left early, kahit pwede naman magtrabaho sa bahay. It's like I felt guilty pa for wanting a life. So after many of those consecutive overnights, compounded with the culture, etc., I said, okay, this is it. <laughs> this is my limit. I don't want to do this anymore. And I resigned. Being a people pleaser all the time will make you miserable because it will force you to do things that in your heart you really don't want to do. Being a yes man type of person will only hurt you because by people pleasing, you're basically allowing other people to indirectly control your life. You're going to feel resentment and helplessness because you know that you allowed other people to step all over you. And that's no way to live. There will always be other people who will try to take advantage of your kindness, your patience, your diligence. It's your responsibility to make it known when they've crossed the line and to do something about it. Of course, dapat my basis naman yung refusal niyo to do something, right? Kasi otherwise, it would be insubordination. Yes, it may seem scary at first to say no, or enough is enough, or I'm not doing that. But you should know that when you do that, you're taking a stand for your life, and you're standing up for yourself. You're taking the reins of your own life, and that's a pretty great feeling. Of course, there's no guarantee that the people you say no to will understand. But that's fine. You deserve to live life on your own terms, not theirs. So know your boundaries, and defend them. My next tip is to take risks. If you're not happy with something, then change it. Let's go back to the lawyers only Facebook group that I was talking about a while ago. When some lawyers would post talking about their dissatisfaction in life and asking for advice, I would see other lawyers reply that they had actually gone through the same thing. So self-doubt and dissatisfaction and unhappiness are normal feelings that we all experience. Even if you're an allegedly established professional with allegedly your shit together, like a lawyer. So when you feel that discontentment and that yearning for something more, then my tip is to take a risk. Don't stay in the same state or in the same place. Change something. Sure, you always have the option to take the safe route and to stay in your little safe space and to not change anything. Our instinct for self-preservation tells us to stay within our little safe zones. Do not feel discomfort, do not get rejected, do not experience failure. But I'm telling you, going out of your comfort zone is the single most important thing that you can do for your own self-growth. Once you get past the initial stages of discomfort, because of course you're diving into the unfamiliar and it's uncomfortable, then you will thank yourself for it. It's the only way you will grow, I swear. You might be wondering what are the risks that I took in law practice and in life? Well first, from being a fine arts graduate, I felt like I wanted something more, so I went to law school. 
I was unhappy in my dream law firm, so I resigned and I went to a corporation. I was feeling like I wanted to try something different in law practice, so I became a law school professor while also working full-time. I dated a lawyer that I met at work, <laughs> si Mike, who is now my husband. I accepted a head legal position despite feeling doubt that I didn't know enough to properly head a legal department. I started a YouTube channel <laughs> talking about law and life. I'm starting to share my fitness journey with Picos on Instagram. Follow me pala on Instagram guys, my link is down below. <laughs> All of those were risks because when I made those decisions, there was no guarantee that they were gonna work out. They could have bombed badly <laughs> and thank god they didn't. But at the end of the day, if I hadn't taken that risk and tried, then none of those good things would have happened to me. In fact, nothing would have happened. So again, you shouldn't feel abnormal for having feelings of discontentment or self-doubt or dissatisfaction. Instead, you should use those feelings to spur yourself to action, to go out of your comfort zone and to take risks. If you don't change something, then you can't expect anything to change. Things will stay the same unless and until you change them. Only you are the architect of your life, the master of your destiny, the author of your story. The biggest risk is to not take risks at all. Okay, my next tip is do not chase the money. Money is a tricky topic because obviously we need it for our needs and our wants, right? It's going to be hard to be happy if you don't have your basic needs. But what I'm saying is when you're a lawyer naman, at least in the Philippines, even when you're starting out, your salary is going to be enough naman to cover your needs and maybe a few wants. Well, provided of course that your needs aren't a yacht or an Hermes bag. <laughs> so yeah, when you're a Filipino lawyer, you will have enough to get by. You'll have enough so that you won't need to sell your soul for money. So considering that, don't let money be the force that drives you in everything that you do. Otherwise, you're putting your soul up for sale. I'm not saying that if you want money, then you're immoral. Of course not. Who doesn't like good food and nice things nga naman, diba? Especially after years of law school wherein you're just studying while your contemporaries are already enjoying their money. It's not bad to want money. This is especially so if you're the breadwinner with a family to support. The desire for money only becomes bad when you're willing to bend your core principles, your morals, your beliefs for it. Because if you're willing to let money rule your life, then it's a slippery slope. Everything will take a backseat to that, like your conscience. Kasi nga yung pera yung inauna mo, diba? Money will come if you work hard and if you are patient. Of course, within the first few years of your practice, don't expect that you'll be rolling in dough <laughs> or that you'll be able to buy a Rolex within your first year of becoming a lawyer. Yun nga, you have to be patient, you have to work hard, and you have to get a little bit more senior in the hierarchy. Candid lang tayo, will lawyering make you rich? I won't say that it's an outright yes because it doesn't follow that if you're a lawyer, then you'll automatically be rich. It really does not follow. So the answer is that lawyering can make you rich but it will take many many years of hard work and trade-offs and an insane amount of stress for that to happen. Will it make you fabulously wealthy? Private jets, ganon. No, generally no, it will not make you that kind of crazy rich. I remember to what a lawyer I know told us when we were first year law students. He said, if you want to be rich, don't be lawyers, be businessmen or businesswomen. So if you want money to be your priority, then there are ways other than lawyering to do it. In fact, there are ways better than lawyering to do it, like yun nga, going into business. Personally, of course, I do have material things that I want in life pa. Like, I want a bigger house with a nice big yard wherein our dogs can run, because right now, medyo maliit yung garden namin, things like that. But am I willing to make money my priority just so that I can have those things? No. No, I'm not. I'd rather have time, I'd rather have good health, I'd rather have my family around, than to have all the money in the world. <laughs> ah, sige po, pababain ko na po yung tao. Thank you. I ordered pizza. I'd rather have pizza than a ton of money. <laughs> Do I trust that if I keep working hard, even if I don't lust after money, or even if I don't give up my principles, that I will have those things in the future? Yes. Am I happy right now even without those things? Yes. Let me end this by saying that being a lawyer is great, but it shouldn't be all there is to your life. It shouldn't consume you. It should just be one of the many, many facets of the colorful life that you're trying to build. Once you're a lawyer, it's your ability to do things other than the law and to be things other than a lawyer that really makes you interesting and admirable. At least in my eyes. Like, if you're a lawyer, okay, pero marami namang lawyer dyan. But if you're a lawyer and a triathlete, or a lawyer and a painter, doesn't that make things so much more interesting? It's those types of lawyers, yung hindi po work, 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 whom I most admire. The problem kasi is, if all you do is work, if being a lawyer is the only thing that defines you, and if you take that fact that you're a lawyer away, then who would you be? Sino ka? 
who you to be happy in law practice you need to have a persona outside law practice so that if you remove the lawyer part of you then you can still stand alone as a unique individual be a lawyer but don't just be a lawyer be other things ultimately for me the key to staying happy and healthy in law practice is to be someone outside of law practice and to have interests outside of law practice so work hard but make time for family hobbies interests love life study your work materials and learn new legal matter but also study new things that will enrich you as a person like how to cook how to meditate nurture your legal mind by staying updated on laws jurisprudence etc but don't neglect your physical body exercise be a good lawyer but more importantly be a good person after all the world doesn't need more lawyers there are enough of us as it is the world needs more good people so that's it i hope that my tips on how to stay happy and healthy in law practice work as well for you as they're working for me if you guys have any more topic suggestions for me then please leave them in the comment box below if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up please also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification bell below so that you guys are informed of all my future videos oh and follow me on instagram it's the first time that i'm plugging that on my channel ever thank you so much for watching stay safe and see you in my next video bye Hi! Hello world! Do you have any tips for my viewers? Do you have any tips on how to be a happy and healthy doggo? <laughs> Tell us the secret! Tell us the secret to happiness, Pan! <laughs> because we're all trying to find it. No, no, no! What's that? The secret to happiness is lots and lots of treats? <laughs> cute! You're so cute! So adorable! <laughs> Okay, say bye! Say bye! <laughs>